Joining us now is Dr. Kathleen Ballou, Associate Professor of History at Northwestern University and author of Bring the War Home, The White Power Movement and Paramilitary America. Professor, thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Uh, so I, it feels from the outside that immigration has basically become a vehicle to convey the white replacement theory. Do you think that's accurate? I mean, th that is what it feels like the conversation has devolved to, at least on the right. Yeah, one way to understand replacement theory is that it comes out of a set of fringe ideologies. This has been a live idea on the edges of our politics um, in the recent past and even earlier in the 20th century. And the way it works is that it connects all of these different social issues that we usually think of as sort of capital C conservative um, through the lens of white reproduction and particularly through the birth of white children and a hyper focus on the white birth rate. Mm. So immigration becomes a concern because large numbers of people coming in might outnumber the white population in the country. But then also abortion is a concern because it might white lower the white birth rate. Feminism is a concern because if women are out of the home, that might lower the white birth rate. Yep. And we see a whole bunch of other issues like opposing gay rights, opposing transgender movements, um, opposing um, close contact with communities of color. All of these become seen as the same kind of a threat. What, what, you know, the, the other piece of immigration is it allows Republicans to vilify people of color using the term outsider, even though the effects of that racist language is felt by communities of color that are native to this country, right? Yeah, and a, a lot of communities that have been here for a very long time. One thing that was striking in the J.D. Vance uh, debate is that his defense was, of course I wouldn't do that because I have this biracial family, I have these beautiful children, I get threats against my family. But the thing is that this language is dangerous for a whole bunch of children, not just those children. This language allows attacks. We have a, a near past history that has a, a, a record of violent attacks on people using this idea set. And we have a whole century of vigilantism and other kinds of anti-immigrant violence that have been enabled by exactly this kind of thinking. To what degree is this cyclical? I mean, we talk about what happened in the earlier part of the 20th century. Stephen Miller, who is the architect of Trump's immigration policies and a fan of President Calvin Coolidge's Immigra Immigration Act of 1924, which was effectively, it is a law based on eugenics. Is it just a matter of demographic change that this kind of vitriol and poisonous rhetoric springs up? Or is are we at a sort of apex point that is unparalleled in modern American history? So as a historian, I'm contractually obligated to say that we are off the map contextually. We have too many different factors at play at this point to draw any true historical parallel. But what I can say is that as somebody who has studied extremist movements and the Klan, one kind of context that we should be looking to in the 1920s when that anti-immigration legislation was passed, that was also the peak prior to now of Klan activity and Klan violence. That's when 4 million people or 10% of the state of Indiana were in the Klan and it was totally socially acceptable. We have pictures of Klansmen marching down the National Mall with robes and hoods, but their faces in plain view. They were doing Sunday school picnics and church pageants and business campaigns. That's where we are in extremism. It's in our mainstream, it's in our politics, and it's going to be incredibly difficult to extricate from here. Yeah, you mentioned how intersectional it is, and it seems impossible to excise that from the broader conservative platform at this stage of the game. Well, the concern, I think, is that when we see this kind of mainstreaming without a backstep. It isn't that somebody is accidentally picking up an idea and saying, oops, I used extremist rhetoric. It's that people are using it in ways that are meant to be plausibly deniable, a bit here, a snippet there. But as we see in that clip set, this is a coordinated campaign where people are using this idea across the Republican campaigns. Um, it, it's incredibly alarming if you live in a society that's interested in the rule of law by fair election, because this means that extremist groups that previously had been targeting our populations through mass casualty attacks and individual acts of, of terror are now also making attacks on our institutions themselves. <sighs> um, well, it's good to talk to you about it and it's good to talk about what's happening. That's the first step, right? Kathleen Ballou, Associate Professor of History at Northwestern University and author of Bring the War Home, The White Power Movement and Paramilitary America. Thank you for your time and wisdom tonight. Thanks for having me, Alex.